A new chapter begins, and a new opportunity to learn about another great ancient mythology emerges, which was based in the northern regions of Africa. Amazi, and Imizihan in plural, is a word which means free people in the indigenous Tamazi language. The indigenous land of Imazihan is a region called Tamazga, encompassing Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Western Sahara, Mauritania, the Canary Islands, and parts of Egypt, Mali and Niger. Although the majority of texts about this mythology have been lost, or altered, the rituals have survived. Join me on this next adventure, filled with wonder and excitement, on this new chapter called, Amazi Mythology. Amun was the most important god that the Amazighan and Egyptians had in common. Although most modern sources ignore the existence of Amun in Amazi mythology, this was perhaps the greatest of the ancient Amazighan deities. He was also honored by the Greeks in Cyrenaica, and was fused with the Phoenician god Baal, due to the Libyan influx. Details of Amun vary among tribes, with many of the stories associating the mystical figure with water, rain, lightning and thunder. Amun also became associated with the ram, and was depicted with small ram's horns, which later on became known as the Horns of Amun. As the cult of Amun grew in importance, he became identified with other chief deities, who were worshipped in other areas during that period. The horned god was highly important, and is thought by believers to be represented by such deities as the Celtic Kernunus, and the Greek Pan. Horns have been present in mythological imagery as symbols of fertility and power. This theory influenced the neo-pagan notion of the horned god as an archetype of male virility and sexuality. The horns of Ammon may have also represented the east and west of the earth, and one of the titles of Ammon was the Horned One. The most famous temple of Ammon in ancient Libya was the Augural Temple at Siwa in Egypt. An oasis still inhabited by Amazighan. Ammon might be derived from Amman which means water in Amazigh. Some of the ancient Greeks of Cyrenaica also adopted some Amazighan customs, and marrying Amazighan women. Amazighan that worshipped Ammon, fused him with Zeus to become Zeus Ammon, and they were called Nazman. The Cyrenaic Greeks built temples for the Libyan god Ammon instead of Zeus, and then identified their supreme god with the Libyan god Ammon. The worship of Ammon was so widespread among the Greeks, that even Alexander the Great decided to be declared the son of Zeus in the temple of Siwa, by the Libyan priests of Ammon. Antaeus, referred by the Amazighs Anti, was a figure in Amazigh and Greek mythology. He was celebrated for his defeat by Hercules as a component of his twelve labors. In Greek sources, he was a Goliath child of Poseidon and Gaia, who lived in the desert of Libya. His significant other was the goddess Tingis, for whom the city of Tangia in Morocco was named. Antis appreciated testing all travelers to wrestling matches, and stayed powerful as long as he kept in touch with his mother the earth. Wrestling regularly endeavored to constrain adversaries to the ground, which were fights that he generally won, sometimes by killing his rivals. He assembled a sanctuary to his father Poseidon utilizing their skulls. Antaeus battled Hercules, as he was en route to the nursery of Hesperides as Hercules's eleventh labor. The story goes that during the battle amongst Antaeus and Hercules, Antaeus would draw his energy from the earth on which he stands, thus to overcome him, Hercules lifted Antaeus from the earth and held him high above it, as to deny him of re-energizing his solidarity, until Antaeus lost all his energy, and hence the fire of his life was famished of its nurturing source. The challenge among Hercules and Antaeus was a favored subject by ancient and renaissance sculptors. He was presumably consolidated into Greek mythology, after the Greek conquest of Libya during the 7th century BC. In Amazon mythology, Atlas was viewed as perhaps the most noteworthy mountain in North Africa. The Amazighan loved Atlas on the grounds that for them he was the nearest to paradise. That is the motivation behind why most Amazighan people all over North Africa used to live close to the mountains, regardless of whether it implied that they needed to bear cruel climate conditions and demanding lifestyle. As you may know, Atlas was a Greek titan like Kronos, Uranus or Gaia. In the folklore of the titan Atlas, he defied Zeus with numerous others, and was defeated. To rebuff him, Zeus sentenced him to hold the top of the skies at the western edge of the world. As you may have noticed, in the event that you overlook the Americas, Morocco seems like the actual west of the world for a Greek individual. Thus they accepted that the titan may be there on a high mountain to hold the sky from falling. The myth of Atlas and Perseus tells the story of Perseus turning Atlas to stone using Medusa's head. One day, Perseus was on his way home after beheading Medusa. He made it to the end of the earth and came upon Atlas holding up the earth. Perseus asked Atlas for shelter from his long journey. 
Atlas was told in an ancient prophecy that someone would come for his sacred golden apples, so Atlas turned Perseus away. Perseus was angry that Atlas would not provide him shelter during his long journey, so he took out Medusa's head from his satchel and showed it to Atlas. Atlas looked into the eyes of the beheaded Medusa and was turned to stone immediately. For this reason they named those mountains the Atlas Mountains. The Atlantic Sea is additionally named after the god, which was viewed as the Ocean of Atlas. Furthermore, the lost island of Atlantis was additionally named after him, which was viewed as the island of Atlas. Ifri is an Amazigoddess of fire like Vesta from the Roman pantheon. She was the deity who gave her name to the African continent in light of the scorching heat of the mainland. A few sources say that she is additionally the goddess of fortune and fruitfulness. She was the principal fertility and plenitude deity to a portion of her worshippers. Her iconography ordinarily incorporated an elephant veil crown, wavy hair, white nose, a cornucopia and a lion. Some alternate names for the goddess were Afri, Ifri, Ifru, and Africa, and was additionally regarded as the goddess of fortune, war, and protection by the Eriga clan in modern-day Tunisia. Pliny the Elder referenced that no one in Africa chose to do anything prior invocation of Africa, the Latin name of Ifri. This goddess was addressed in assorted manners on Numidian coins from the 1st century BCE. At the point when the Romans conquered northwest Africa, she showed up on the coins of the Roman states in North Africa. The Imazidin utilized a few divinities as war divine beings during the time of their resistance against the Romans. They had the war goddess Ifri who was viewed as the defender of her worshippers and was portrayed on the Imazidin coins as well, and appeared to be an influential goddess in North Africa. However, the Romans embraced her and called her Africa and considered her again to be the image of their triumphs against the Amazon. Anzar can be associated with Poseidon or Zeus in Greco-Roman folklore, since he shows up as a helpful element who fortifies the vegetation and agribusiness, sustains the yields and guarantees the development of the herd. Rain itself is assimilated to seed, therefore it enters into the realm of procreation. To get the rainfall to come, it is important to pray to Anzar and make everything in your power to bring his fertilizing action. Anzar is a typical word, found in Amazigh language which basically alludes to rain, however he additionally bears different titles, for example, Ajelid en Ujefa, king of the rain, Ajelid en Waman, king of the water, and Ajelid Anzar, king Anzar, among others. Quite naturally and since a long time ago, the Amazigh people thought that the most effective solicitation was to offer Anzar a bride, who by inciting sexual and exotic longing, would create favorable conditions for the flow of love and bring the fertilizing waters. The god Anzar is with no doubt of particular importance in the beliefs of the Amazigh people since antiquity, as he is the personification of rain itself. Ambivalent in nature, tyrannical, ruthless yet vital and essential just like rainfall, his tradition has came down to us thanks to the ancient fertility rites of Tislet and Anzar still practiced today, in some Amazigh regions and villages, to bring good harvests and ask for protection against drought. Unfortunately over the decades these ancient festivals, receded and came to disappear, almost completely due to religious zealotry and fanatism denouncing native pre-Islamic traditions, as despicable pagan rites. The sacred ritual of Tislet and Anzar, or, the fiancé bride of Anzar in English, is shared everywhere from Morocco to Libya, with just slight changes occurring as far as serenades and sonnets during the festivals. Gerzil or Agazil was a war deity of the ancient Amazighan. Gerzil was a child of the Libyan Egyptian god Amon, and was a significant god in Amazigh folklore, particularly among Laguatan clans in Libya, later known as Lauta, during the Islamic period. His cult most likely proceeded to the 11th century AD, as indicated by Andalusian student of history al Bakri, in Gerza southwest Libya, a city presumably named after Gerzil, which was a sanctuary dedicated to him. Furthermore, there are signs that his religion stretched out right to Volubilis in Morocco. He was taken by the Amazighan to their fights against the Romans as a protector and as a divine assistant. Additionally, Charippus referenced that the Amazighan utilized Gazil as a war god against the Byzantines, and also said that the leader of the Jana clan had been killed, while guarding his god Gazil. According to some sources, this same god had been utilized by the Amazighan against the Middle Eastern or Islamic conquest. Charippus further mentions that the chief of the Laguatan was also the high priest of Gerzil, and that depictions of this god represented by a bull, were conveyed during battle, just as a real bull that was liberated against the enemy in the primary charge. After the Imazimen were defeated, the chief of the Laguatan fled with the sacred image of Gerzil. However, he was caught and killed and the image was destroyed. A temple among the ruins of Gerzil in Libya, may have been dedicated to Gerzil, and the name of the town itself may even be related to his name. Aisha Kandisha is a female legendary figure in northern Moroccan folklore, 
One of various folkloric characters, who are like Jin, yet have particular personalities, she is ordinarily portrayed as a beautiful young lady, who has the legs of a hoofed creature, like a goat or a camel. In spite of the fact that portrayals of Aisha Kandisha fluctuate from one area to another inside Morocco, she is for the most part thought to live near water sources, and is said to utilize her beauty to entice nearby men and afterward exasperate or kill them. Nearly all accounts of Aisha Kandisha distinguish her home as a nearby water source. In Tangier this is believed to be the ocean. In Tatown, it is the Martil River. In Fez it is a drainage canal. And among the Beni Azan it is the Seba River. There is likewise broad arrangement that she basically goes after young men, whom she tempts with her beauty, or by acting like their spouses. More restricted convictions about Aisha Kandisha for example, those of the Beni Azan mentioned that she fears steel blades and needles, and that she has a husband or male partner, known as Hamu Ko. In more southern regions of Morocco, including Daukala, she is rather called Karaja. In the customs of the Bufi Sufi order, Aisha Kandisha is only one of a number of female jinn, with a given name Aisha, every one of whom have various personalities. The Bufis believe her to wear dark articles of clothing, have camel-like feet, and cause pregnant women who see her, to prematurely deliver. A more recent proposal is that Kandisha was gotten from a genuine historical figure, to be specific, a Moroccan countess, or contessa, from El Jadida, who helped resist the Portuguese by seducing their soldiers who were then killed by Moroccan fighters while they slept. Tafak and Ayur are the primordial Amazigh cosmic deities of the sun and moon, made by the first mother of the world. Different legends and folk tales reveal to us that in a period going as far back as the beginning of time, when divine beings actually strolled among us, neither the sun nor the moon existed, and darkness veiled the entirety of the earth like silk. Devastation and sterility ruled everything. Setet, the first mother of the world, emerged from the underworld and began to shape the earth as we know it, paving the way for humanity to settle it. One day the holy bull and the consecrated ram met and bonded, and with time they encountered a hardship of an obscure disease which assaulted their eyes. Setet, seeing her first manifestations were gradually perishing from this unpleasant disorder, tied them up, and in a progression of recondite chants and rituals, she extricated the dark tumor from their eyes. She first cut off the edge of the harmed bull's eyelid, and dropped it into her water mirror. As soon as the eyelid made contact with the water, it bursted in a spectacular explosion of mist, and from the eerie fog, a sphere of intense and unadulterated brilliance started to develop, as it ascended in the sky with its relieving shine. Thus the moon was created. The bull watched in amazement the ritual of Setet giving birth to a creature never seen before. She then did the same with the ram's eyelid, and threw it in a sacred fire that she had lit inside her mystical recipient. When the ram disposed of his bonds, he hurried towards the fire, and began watching it cautiously. After a moment, a colossal burst came, and the sun in its grandiose luminescence came out of the fire. It extended continuously and grandly, until it arrived to the skies to enlighten the obscurity from a higher place. Setet then gave them their names, Tafakt and Ayur. They were now born from this magical ceremony, and as both joined the skies, they took their place on their thrones to rule over the cosmos as equals. 